Hey, I'm Amanda and welcome to my mini series on some of my most popular posts from Instagram. I'm a NICU nurse and a clinical nurse specialist. I've been in the NICU 16 years today. We're going to talk a little bit about head swelling. So head swelling can be a common physical finding on newborn babies, and it can be pretty benign where you're not too worried or really serious where you're very worried. So let's kind of talk about some of the different types of head swelling. One thing to think about is the overall anatomy when you're thinking about the layers of the scalp. And a good mnemonic to help you remember that is just scalp. So from the outermost to the innermost, we could think of that mnemonic scalp. So S is for skin. C is for connective tissue. This is the dense section where the blood vessels are running. A for aponeurosis or the galea aponeurotica. This is the tough fibrous tissue. And then L for loose areolar tissue, and then P, periosteum, which is right above the skull bone. I don't know about you guys, but every time I would take the stable class or I would be learning about these types of things, we would always talk about the periosteum, and I would just be like, mm -hmm, yeah, totally. Um, what is the periosteum, right? So the periosteum is this thin but very tough membrane that wraps around the skull bone. It actually nourishes the bone and provides this protective barrier. It's very tightly adhered to the suture lines, which is why some types of head swellings, you'll find that the, the swelling does not cross the suture line. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But as NICU nurses, it's important that we know and understand the swelling in relation to the periosteum because that helps us tell the difference between different types of head swellings. Now let's review these different types of head swellings. So first we have the caput succedaneum. So that is a very benign, pretty common type of head swelling. So the swelling is just above the periosteum. It's just in the subcutaneous tissue. It easily crosses lines and it can be dependent. So if the baby's laying on this side, it can go over here. And if the baby's laying on that side, it can go over there. So it, it shifts and it's really just from, you know, sitting in the vaginal canal, maybe a little bit of a vacuum use, um, but it's swelling and it will go down within a couple of days. So you can remember caput and caput crosses. It, it can have some pitting edema on the head. And so that, that is some things to think about with a caput succedine. The next type of head swelling that we need to know is the cephalohematoma. So this is when there's actually a collection of blood between the skull bone and the periosteum. And since the periosteum is very tightly bound to those suture lines, the swelling stays confined to that bone. So it will not cross suture lines. In these cases, sometimes babies can have more jaundice because of the hemolysis of that blood in that in that area trapped under that periosteum and it can take a lot longer for this swelling to resolve it can take anywhere from days to even weeks for that to resolve and sometimes we can also see fractures occasionally or calcifications from that cephalohematoma so that's something to, for families to be aware of something to monitor and something that the pediatrician is going to monitor once that baby goes home so remember that a cephalohematoma it does not cross suture lines it's not as pity or as soft feeling it's more firm and it can contribute to hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice because of all of those red blood cells that are trapped in that space now the third one and the most scary something that you really need to be aware of is a subgaleal hemorrhage. A subgaleal hemorrhage is an emergency in the NICU. So what happens is that there's bleeding in the subaponeurotic or the subgaleal space. And this is deep in the galea and above the periosteum. So it can actually travel from the top of the eyebrows all the way around to the nape of the neck and even push the ears forward. That space can hold a huge amount of blood and some sources say up to 240 mLs, which could be almost a baby's entire blood volume in some cases. So we have to keep an eye up for this boggy fluctuant swelling that crosses the suture lines and it can increase over time. So with these kiddos, we really need to watch their neurologic assessment, watch for signs of shock because they'll start to go into hypovolemic shock because that cardiac output is 
going to start decreasing. They'll become tachycardic. They'll become tachypnic. They could be pale and they have all this swelling in their little heads. A subgaleal hemorrhage is a really serious matter. These babies can quickly progress into hypovolemic shock, so they need to be closely monitored. So as NICU nurses, we're often monitoring, of course, vital signs very frequently, head circumference, hematocrit and hemoglobin levels over time, as well as their neurologic status just for overall signs of shock. So to recap, we had the caput succedaneum, which is just subcutaneous edema. You might see pitting edema. It resolves in just a few days. The cephalohematoma, where there's bleeding under the periosteum, it's not going to cross suture lines, and it takes a little longer to resolve and has increased association with jaundice. And then subgaleal hemorrhage is an emergency, and we need to monitor those babies very closely for shock, specifically hypovolemic shock. I know head swelling can sometimes feel kind of confusing, especially when you're trying to make sure you're charting accurately and especially if it's new to you. So make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more NICU education. And if you're looking to become a certified NICU nurse, check out my certification review course. I'll leave the link in the description below. See you later.